Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Roger Shah in which he tells the story behind the Sun Lounger classic White Sand. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind White Sand by Sun Lounger, my interview with Roger Shah. Enjoy. Roger Shah is a German DJ, producer and composer who is known under lots of different project names. During the years he released music as DJ Shah, Purple Mood, Global Experience, Savannah and of course his Sun Lounger project. In the year 2006 he released the track White Sand which was the first track which came out under the name Sun Lounger. It became a big success and it was the start of many other successful Sun Lounger tracks. For this interview I sat down with Roger to ask him about the story behind White Sand and more. My first question to him was around what age he did start with listening to music. Oh, I started uh, with the age of like 12 years old, I think so. Mm -hmm. more, more like German music at first and then a bit of the 80s. Electronic, this is how I got a bit into it. Yeah, so can you name some of the artists or acts? Oh, I'm so bad even with, with my own tracks. Oh. So, but I would say everything 80s electronic, like uh, Eurythmics and all that type of type of stuff. Yeah, okay. Everything which was a little bit synthesizers, mm -hmm. and so like Yasu, go yeah. oh, with that yeah. synth line. Yeah. Yeah. That was the stuff um, I started to, yeah. to discovering. I guess Depeche Mode, something Depeche like Mode, yeah. even yeah. Depeche Mode, always I felt a bit too dark. I mean, you know, I'm more like the melodic guy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I always felt it a bit too dark, but of course I liked the yeah. tracks as well. Yeah. So w when did you start making music yourself? Oh, I mean, I got into music education with age of 14. My goal has always been to become a um, um, classical composer, more like a Hans Zimmer going to movies. And that's when I started my education uh, for, for that. I, and I ended that by age of 16. Um, next step would have been become like a conductor. But that I felt with age of 16, that's a bit boring. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I stopped by then and then just by a few friends actually who were DJs in our local area and they, they realized actually I'm a classical composer. They asked me if I'm able to play some melodies for them. This is how I discovered the kind of dance music and realized actually if they do it this way, maybe I should look into discovering and trying to do something like that as well. So I would say, uh, so with around age of 16, 17, I worked on my first, I tried to make first tracks, but I always could play the melodies, but production wise was still like, oh, how do I get that stuff together, right? Yeah. So, so do you still remember your first production? So first production, I think was like in 1994, 95, more like Eurodance. I worked a bit also as a, as a, as a composer in the background with, for some of the Eurodance artists at that time. Um, so I think, yeah, that was like my first, my first, the, my first release was SDJ Shah, maybe in 1995. And do you remember the title? And it was called The Mission. So it was just on a small label, nothing yeah. happened with it, yeah. of course. But then um, how, how old were you then? I was, I was like in 95, I was like 23, yeah, yeah something like that. Okay, so uh, yeah, for this vlog we're going to talk about White Sand, a beautiful progressive trance track which came out back in 2006 under the name Sun Lounger. Yeah, for this one you did work together with Jörg Stenzel, uh, who yeah. is part of York, together with his brother Thorsten Stenzel. Yeah. Uh, first things first, uh, how and where did you and York got to meet? Um, actually, we met at a few shows. Um, I remember one, one show in Germany and he had a live act with, with um, playing his guitars. This is, I think, when we exchanged numbers. Um, but then we never been like really close and then out of nowhere he contacted me and saying hey we should do a collab and it was just when i started signing my first deals with amala at that time and he said i have this guitar riff and i just don't know what to do with it uh, and i was like actually send it over maybe i can do something with it so, so this is how we actually got into working together yeah so so do you live anywhere near or actually he lives uh, he lived at that time around for frankfurt area and i'm in stuttgart so that's not that far but actually we were not sitting together making the record this was like done via the internet yeah yeah, yeah actually actually yeah it was yeah. early start of internet yeah. Yeah. kind yeah. of uh, so do you, do you still something remember something from the production process yeah i do first of all they, how we came together was interesting too so so i signed my first track with amada 
um, they invited me to come to the ADE um, to want just to sign my record deal, my first record deal with them, and then to go with them on their boat for that Armada, Armada night and the oh, boat yeah. Armin was playing. And my first track at that time was my track with Jan Johnston, Beautiful, it was my first release with Armada. And just when I went there and brought my master CD with the additional mixes, in that week is when I made White Sand. Oh. So at that time, there was no White Sand name. It was like October as well. As yeah, it was cold uh, probably. I mean, it, it's a, so I'm, I'm working on the master, super excited to go to Amada, sign my record deal. We are talking about night in 2005. And I finished the master and in that week, um, Jörg sent me that, that guitar riff. And I felt like, well, actually, that's a very catchy melody. And he said, actually, it's a 130-ish beats, do with it whatever you want. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, uh, let me play around with some beats. And at that time, I liked a lot the kind of tribal house type of stuff. So when you think, when you listen, we really listen to the original of White Sand, that's even not trend. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a tribal house, Balearic bongo percussion track yeah. with this melodic guitar riff in the break. And that's pretty much it. There's no sequence, nothing in it. And I just liked the track and felt it's very outstanding. So I just burned it on the same CD, thinking if I go to the Amada guys, and meet them, I just give it to them and see what they think. I just felt it's outstanding. I don't know what to do with it, but now that I'm going to see the Amada guys, give it a chance, <laughs> you know? So I did, met the guys, drove back home. So I got an email in my folder when I, when I was home. And they were saying, thanks for stopping by, great to see you, blah, blah, blah. One question, what is this ID IT track? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, actually, it's just something I finished just this week, so I thought I'd show it. And they said, that's a huge hit. That's actually even bigger than the track we just signed. <laughs> Armin loves it. He wants to play it next week. We want to release it right away. Um, I think you should think about signing with a second project because it sounds a bit different to like your, your trend stuff you showed us and we just signed with you. So maybe think about something else. And I'm like, okay, let me think about it. Now I have just ID, ID, no pressure. They want to play it next week right away. So I was just thinking, okay, I was back from Ibiza. Whenever I go somewhere, I collect like the, um, like the books you find in, in, the, in the hotel, like about, yeah. about sightseeing, about stuff. So no joke. So I got this book from, from Ibiza. I opened it and first page, I saw an advertisement about a company selling sun loungers. And I felt, holy shit, I think sun lounger would be a really cool artist name for that kind of summery guitar type mm -hmm. of vibe. So I, I wrote it down and then I just kept on checking out and then um, they described all the beaches and they described about Salinas and stuff and with the beautiful clear blue water, white sand. And I felt like Sun Launcher artist, white sand title, that track, that should be great. Yeah. So I sent the ideas to the guys and they said, we love it. That's it. And I think rest is history. It yeah. just became one of the biggest tracks of the year yeah. and the birth of Sun Launcher, which is a way bigger project in terms of sales, streams, than my Roger Shah trend yeah. stuff I usually do. So yeah, so that's really interesting the way that comes together. Yeah, but it's, it's kind together. of funny that something like a, like a small idea went to something Yeah, like I wasn't, I mean, I made White Sand in four hours. Wow. Yeah, I just got the riff, played beats around it, get, created a nice atmosphere, burned it on the CD and the guys came back saying actually, this is a hit. Mm -hmm. This is like huge. And yeah, and this is how it started. Yeah. You know? So I guess then you call your work like, uh, hey, this was a good idea. Yeah, actually great riff. So thank you. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so <laughs> that was uh, really cool. And, and yeah, so this is how we started with, with the track. So what, what kind of equipment did you use for the track? Um, I mean, at, at that time, I mean, I was already, I just switched. I think at, back in the days I worked with Atari. And I think I just switched to my first Mac and started to work more on software. Um, I think I did the pad sounds with Omnisphere. At that time it was still called Ad Atmosphere, I think. And then it was just more like working programming percussions and stuff. Uh, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really a lot of stuff in that track. You know? So uh, it, was, it was just that feel. It, it just takes you on a, you just can imagine walking on, on, on a beach, on a yeah. beautiful beach. And I think that was the secret of the success. And then the fact, I think Armin was hammering it like, like in every crazy. set, like, yeah. like crazy. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you already said you made a track in like four hours time. So I'm not sure if this is a valid question, but, <laughs> but, but what, what was the most difficult part of the production? 
Um, yeah, there was nothing difficult about it. It was just just really having having fun, playing around, just listening to the the melody and finding the key chord progression around it to just uh, to play around with it. That was pretty much it. And then just make an arrangement which would make sense from a DJ point of view, how you would mix it in. Yeah. And I wasn't even thinking that would be something for a trans crowd. I was thinking at that time it would be more like, because at that time I really liked like Juice and Ceballos, uh, stereo productions, that kind of tribal house yeah. type of music. I still like it till today. And I wanted to aim for that direction, eventually maybe try to sign it maybe there. But then now that I was on the way to Amada, I felt I'd give it a chance. Yeah. And then it totally went this direction and became one of the biggest records. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the dance version was finished before you did the, the down tempo yeah, version? Yeah, that's I always do with Sun Launcher. For all the albums you guys know, um, I always work on the whole dance album, almost like I work track by track and then always I do always the non-stop mix first to see how the tracks would fit. Sometimes I would even change some key of the track to make it fit into the mix. Yeah, so it flows better. Yeah, yeah, then it flows better. And just when that is done, then I take the whole tracks and make it like a get rid of all the beats, everything beat related and play additional elements to it to make to bring it into that Sun Launcher trademark yeah. chill, chill yeah. atmosphere. I think it's a pretty cool idea, you know, because yeah, some people, they, they love the dance version. Yeah, it depends also on the yeah. mood. Some people want like, yeah. Yeah, the dance versions and then, you know, like on a yeah. Sunday in the sun, you want like yeah. uh, the chill out versions. Yeah, I have to say those credits also go to Michael from Amara. Mm -hmm. when, when, so now that he got his hit record and then after White Sand got really big, Michael told me, hey Roger, what about doing a whole Sun Lounge album? Because this music is really unique, especially at that time, there was nothing out, it, out there like it. You should give the people a whole album. And then this is when I, when, I, when I wrote Another Day on the Terrace, the whole album, which became, if I'm not mistaken, I think at that time they told me that it was Amada's first number one in the general charts oh, wow. uh, on iTunes, international country. And I think until today, it's still in the top 100 of iTunes. Oh, wow. Since 2007, nonstop. Not I bad. think it, I think it's still there. If you check yeah. it, it's, oh. I think it's still there. Because whenever whenever I I check the charts for a new album and, and you go through the top hundred and you try to find your position, I still see it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and then my my new album is climbing up at some point uh -huh. and disappearing, but uh -huh. that one is still there. Yeah. So and this is from 2008 as well. No, that's from the, that was from 2000. The album was released 2007. 2009? Oh, yeah, okay. so it's, I think it's since 2007, it's it's there. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. It was such a special time, special album, yeah, yeah. and and people still, yeah. So Michael got the idea actually telling me actually if we make Sun Launch, especially with the album. So I did the album just in the dance versions with, mm -hmm. with, to make it fit with White Sand and I think the follow up single was Aquas Blancas. Mm -hmm. So to keep that that vibe, and then at some point Michael said. What do you think about, because it's so summerish, what do you think about we should make it chill out as well? Because then it, then it becomes even timeless. Yeah, and then you also reach like a different audience. Maybe. Different audience and chill yeah. out is timeless. You can yeah. listen it anywhere, anytime. And I think that became the secret of why, why Sun Lounge is such a big success around the world and still is because yeah. of the, the streaming. Yeah. The streaming numbers are still really good compared to like the usual trends, mm -hmm. streams you have, you know, so. Good for you. Uh, good for me. And this is something I still, whenever I see Michael, I say, actually, that was still a great, a great, idea. great idea. So sometimes even he's telling me, Roger, this is still, Sun Lounge is also a bit my baby uh -huh. because yeah. we kind of invented the ideas together. Yeah. So yeah. that's a nice chance for me to say thanks. If he would ever, if he would ever see that, um, to say actually it was great the way we, we got that out of, out of nowhere and built that project. Yeah. So yeah, the, the dance version, besides Armin, who, who else was playing it? I mean, at that time, I can't remember, but I felt like everyone was playing it. I think it got also number one on B-Port and then everyone started to play it. The interesting thing with White Sand is that we got the trans guys playing it and we got the house guys playing it at that time. You know, that was really cool. Yeah, um, Yeah. so I think now it's a bit more more difficult because now it's more, everyone has its sub-genre and you don't want to even some guys from that genre don't look at the guys from yeah, that yeah, genre, yeah. right? So at that time, I felt it was a bit more open. Yeah, nobody cared. You, you know, had, like, you had music a bit more. Music. Yeah, even for me as an artist, I always felt because I've, I'm coming. I'm not coming from dance music. I'm coming from orchestral music. Mm -hmm. For me, there's orchestral music and there's dance music. Coming from that world, 
I don't care about subgenres. Yeah. I don't care if it's house, if it's trance, that even you 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 divide trance again in, in so many different uh, genres, like then you have progressive house, techno, now it's melodic techno. For me, there's just classical music and there's electronic music. Yeah. This is how I see it. And me being just a musician, I love to work on different things. But then I realized if I would have a Roger Shah trance track and then I would do a Roger Shah house track, the trance people would give me shit. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to start so many aliases. Mm -hmm. I, I think I have like 40 aliases. Yeah, if you check this box, then it's like, I, oh, this guy is busy. <laughs> yeah, I actually can't remember all my aliases at yeah. some point, right? Yeah. So I had so many just to, to have that artist freedom yeah. to, to do different things without getting, getting a shitstorm. Yeah. Which is a pity, because for you as an artist, I think this is sometimes fans don't understand. You're always searching or you're excited to find a new sound, a new direction, or to do change of something. Yeah, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over Yeah, you over don't want to go to an Italian restaurant every day. Yeah, that's true. You are happy once a week or whenever, you have, yeah. oh, I'm missing this for a while. This is when you do it. This is the same as a musician. Yeah. You know, so that's always a bit a tricky, tricky part. So yeah, in 2020, uh, you did an uplifting remix of White Sand, uh, but besides that, uh, and besides the two versions that came out on the original vinyl, uh, White Sand has never been remixed officially by someone else as far as I know. Is there a reason for that? Uh, actually, there is no reason for that. It's just, I don't know. It, yeah. Maybe because the, the first one was really timeless and mm -hmm. there was no need to do it. And then the only reason why I did it was um, when I played the Dream State show. I wanted to make it fit into my uplifting yeah, set, yeah. so that's why I did a remix, yeah. and, oh, the remix, and then Amada liked it uh, and, and and released it, and then they said actually you should do more um, of your old tracks, in especially in the uplifting version, and yeah. yeah, it's almost like just just last week when I did the Luminosity show. This was I called it. We didn't theme it that way because I got the idea after the flyer was out, which was just rescheduled from like two years ago, I think, mm -hmm. or three yeah. years already. I for myself named it Sun Launcher Uplifted uh -huh. because I played all the Sun Launcher tracks, the new ones, the classics, but I played all my uplifting versions yeah, yeah. to have this more, the same feel, but like more with the higher energy yeah, yeah. than just the chill, chill or like the 125-ish mm -hmm. versions, right, for example. So yeah, so yeah uh, recently uh, volume 11 of your compilation Magic Island Music for Balearic People got released. Uh, for the people who don't know this series yet, what can you tell about the Magic Island compilations? Oh yeah, that's um, me showcasing music from my label, music from myself. Um, I have my, my record label um, with the same name. Um, I had a radio show which I stopped. Funny that I stopped my radio show actually during COVID when everyone started streaming. <laughs> I even stopped doing radio show because I got just too excited working on finally working on focusing on music. Mm -hmm. I think during the two, two years lockdown, I wrote over a hundred tracks. Wow. Yeah, just and I just enjoyed it, and I felt okay doing a radio show. It's just a pain. Yeah, it, 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 it takes away. The, <laughs> it yeah. takes away the creativity part yeah. because you have to listen to music, you have to think about what tracks you want to fit together. Mm -hmm. So, so back to your question, Magic Island is my mix series, which we started, I think, in when did we start? Two thousand eight as well, maybe. Um, I usually always try to make it an annual series. But then sometimes it doesn't work out because knowing if I work on a main artist album then would be too squeezed in. Yeah. If you do a mix album, because this would be the tracks I would love to play during the tour. But then if you have an artist album at the same time, this is usually when I skip it. Yeah. So we did the 10 last year with like three CDs. Now we just released the volume 11, um, which is always showcasing two CDs. One is more like showing the deeper side because I, as I said, I like the trance side. I like uplifting trance, melodic and I like the deeper progressive side as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, especially now, I have a lot of fusion of the typical trademark guitar tracks. There's still a few on it. And, but also a lot of melodic techno, which is a genre I really like myself. Um, so that's why it's a great chance for me on the mix album to do two CDs. The one is more the slower, let's say around 120, 125 BPM. And the other one is full on melodic uplifting trance. Yeah. So that's... So yeah, of course uh, you love every track on the compilation, but which ones do really stand out for you? Um, there's uh, always a few regulars and great talent. We have like Pierre Pinar, for example. There's this one guy, Sergei Shabanov. He's really, he's not a DJ. Maybe that's why he has not made a name. 
yet. touring. Yeah. Um, he's just a producer working as a side job, but his music skills are really amazing. All his melodies are really touching. I think on this album, I have four tracks with him oh, wow. uh, on, on it. And then I also teamed up with him working on um, a remix of my Another Day on the Terrace a classic. Um, so he actually started with a remix idea and actually I said, actually, I like the starting point, but I have a few additional ideas because I thought maybe doing an uplifting version myself, mm -hmm. it's just for you to use it for Sun Lounge or Uplifted, as yeah. we just talked about. Um, so we made one together, which is going to be released also later this year. So he's really a huge talent we really like to support. And then of course, uh, Yellow. I think he's really one of the most up and coming artists um, we have in the uplifting scene. Um, I think he just did like uh, a bootleg of Parasma. I think that this was, was that I think was I think this was the most played track at Lumi. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. there was I think a lot of people played it. Yeah. So so he's really uh, I think one of the biggest talents we have. He's also a good friend of mine, and um, he also helps me with working on the label side, and then also be working on music together as well. Yeah. So um, so that's really, I think he he's really one of the guys people should watch. Yeah, the album just came out. How, how, how are the reactions so far? Reactions, amazing as always. I mean, it's a long-lasting series. Um, I'm always honored when I see comments, people saying like, ah, that's, that sounds almost like the old In Search of Sunrise mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. to it, um, which is always nice for me to see because I mean, we all listen to that those albums. Yeah, yeah. And I still kind of try to maintain that bit of a feeling, but that's also the bit of my sound anyways. Mm -hmm. um, Reactions are great. Um, can't wait to finally be back on tour, play some of the tracks. So um, gonna be exciting um, to, to support other artists on my label as well. So feedback is great and just happy also now my son is producing uh, and he got a few tracks on it uh, on CD1. He, he does more melodic techno. So mm -hmm. Um, he's a good talent for sure. Um, that's kind of nice, proud dad moments when, yeah. he, <laughs> when he comes to my studio and show me a few tracks. I'm like, holy shit, this is actually really yeah. good. <laughs> it's not like, okay, it's okay, it's solid. Mm -hmm. It's like, actually, I would really play this, yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, that's actually my next question because, yeah, it's safe to say that, that your family loves music, like uh, your brother, who we know as uh, Pedro Del Mar. Yeah. He's a DJ and producer, and yeah, your son Noah is also doing music. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah how, with how him, did that start? I mean, with him, actually, he. He just learned to play um, guitar and I gave him my old laptop mm -hmm. and there was still logic on it mm -hmm. and a few plugins. He just played around with it. I mean, he was growing up with my music, coming to the studio sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I had to, had, had to mind him and I said, actually, look, I'm very busy, but maybe instead of you being upstairs playing whatever, just keep your stuff, come with me uh, in the studio and do, you, do whatever you want to do there mm -hmm. because I have to, <laughs> have to work on a music deadline. Mm -hmm. I think he picked up a lot, especially in that uh, younger age, they pick up a lot how a compressor works and everything and he got really good. Um, yeah. We had this one turning point when I, when, when I passed his, his room and I heard, and heard music coming out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know at that time that he's already really working on music or he's, he's trying. I, I thought he was listening, going through through some melodic house charts on, on, on Beatport and he's playing this one track and I felt like actually this is amazing. So now I just wanted to ask him uh, what track it is, maybe to put it in my next radio show and then I found out actually, no actually that's, that, that's just me working on it and I'm like holy, oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's like, like really like, like proud dad yeah, of course. moment like wow actually this is really good. I actually finish it, come to my studio, I help you a little bit with the first mix downs, uh -huh. we master it in my studio, yeah. done. And, and so this is how he got his first releases, releasing on my Magic Island Deep label. But now we also want to start to him to branch out to other labels to build up a bit of a fan base. Um, yeah, I mean he's just doing it on a, as a side job uh, while he's studying, but he enjoys it. And I like what I like about him is that he's really finding his own way of making music. It's not like oh, okay, Dad is doing like trance, I want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just finding his own his own sound yeah. and even his own way, the way he's producing. Uh, that sometimes actually, I, I, I'm finding myself asking, how did you come up with this sound? That's actually really cool. Uh, how, how old is your son? He's 18, oh, wow. so he just turned 18. Yeah. So, and it was just like the Lumi last week, um, he just came with me for the first time. Yeah. It was the first time him being with me on stage, filming, getting excited. Yeah. And something funny happened then, right? Because he something, has, he has something. Yeah. So, so the funny thing is, so for people who, who have not seen me play live, so I have a live setup. So usually if I'm in between, 
I always do the sound check somehow before before the show opens and this time I was second in the lineup so I decided actually I just set up everything and leave everything there so we just finished everything and then Sharon was about to be the first one to yeah, play is my yeah and and then stage manager came actually I'm just told to ask you if you could play a few tracks because he's running a bit late there were some issues with pickup and stuff and I was thinking I mean everything is connected he knows how to play i told him actually do you want to just play until jerome starts here so he played his some of his cool tracks he likes to play some tracks also from 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 magic island uh, 11 and yeah so this way it was just funny so he was just playing and, and we didn't even know that that's the live stream starts uh -huh. as well right and i saw a few comments who is this guy this is not jerome playing <laughs> so yeah and then the fun part you know the way kids are he said okay dj debut Luminosity, main, main stage, stage <laughs> check. Yeah, <exactly. laughs> so uh, that was really funny. And he had, a, he, had, he had a great time meeting everyone backstage yeah. and you know, that was really yeah, cool. Super cool. Yeah, for sure. So you're active in the music scene for a long time already. Uh, is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Bah! I mean, at the end of my career, I would really want to go full on scoring. Um, that, so this is why I started at first place. Mm -hmm. I think at some point, if I'm not touring anymore, I would focus more um, achieving that part because for that I have to be in LA. Um, I still I work on the side on a few trailers and stuff, but that's a lot of stuff is like really like behind the scenes. You have to you have to sign a NDA uh, before you even get there, and mm -hmm. so I can't talk too much about it. Mm -hmm. But it's still something I love. It's not like f scoring like a full movie, but making music for trailers. That's still amazing. Um, that's on my list um, in terms of electronic music. Um, Everything I do with Roger Shah is um, really running smooth and great. I'm just creating again a new project uh, in collaboration with Dreamstate at the moment. I'm presenting a totally new show, 100% exclusive, produced for for a live show and will be an album with them. So with is, the, it, is it going to be Roger Shah? Or is it's, it yeah, it's, it's Roger Shah presents, uh, it's called Tribute to Earth. Oh. So um, I just want to take the chance of a one hour limelight peak time for people to to build awareness of the fragile planet we are living on, what we're doing to them, but not being in a very depressive way, just more showing the beauty yeah. of our world. Yeah. And we should just appreciate it where we are living, because I feel some people just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And if we keep on doing this, at some point there's no beauty anymore. No, no. And um, I, that's just something which is close to my heart since a long time. And I just thought it's great to translate that into a show, into yeah. music. So, and that's something we are working on right now. It's going to be like uplifting or? It's going to be uplifting, yeah, to yeah. make it fit into a peak time, peak time set. And we want to use it. And I'm going to release it also with Dream State Records. Um, and then we want to do the show exclusive first uh, with Insomniac for the first few bigger bigger events in the US. And eventually, who knows, maybe bring Next it, year, Lumos, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. bring it to Lumi. I think yeah, that would yeah. be something really amazing. Yeah. Maybe for the first European mm -hmm. show of that, that could be something. Hey, sounds good to me. It sounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk with Bo about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what, what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Uh, I listen to a lot of classical music, movie scores. Um, I listen to a lot of melodic techno, like the current stuff. Actually, I listen to stuff I, I, I hear when, when my son is listening to it, like, <laughs> like Stefan Bozin, Tale of Us, yeah. Martha May, all these guys are really great. Um, I listen to a bit of rock, like Coldplay, one of my favorite yeah. bands. Um, still, this is still on my list to watch live. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's why I'm listening. I'm pretty open to, yeah. to all kinds of directions. Good, good. Yeah. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Good. Yes, I love like the Hawaiian version yeah. of like the Pizza Hawaii kind of yeah. with, with, with pineapple. I like it. Okay, good. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Roger Shah and the story behind White Sand by Sun Lounger. Roger, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with Roger and in that one he's going to tell the story behind Sun Lounger and Lost. That one will be online in a couple of weeks from now so stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.